What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna be doing a cooling system overhaul on my E36 M3. This is a must for any BMW, any older BMW. You know, BMW makes trash cooling systems. So you, like they go every like two, three years. So this is something needs to be done. You gotta do it. You can't run away from it. Usually what I do just replace once you do one thing you replace the whole thing whole system uh radiator uh radiator water pump thermostat hoses whole nine so let's get to it these are all the things that i have hoses uh water pump this will open reservoir uh switches for the uh, radiator, the sensors, clamps, uh, mission motor radiator also. I got the car up on uh, jack sand. Uh, first thing you're gonna wanna do is take your intake off. It just gives you more room to work with. Uh, second, you're gonna have this little shroud. It's two eight mils. You pop them off and it's connected with the uh, alternator uh, routing thing. Pull it off put it aside what we're gonna do next is drain the radiator so that's why we have the car lifted uh, we got to get under the car and unscrew the drain plug so let's do that okay so you're gonna want to set up some catch buckets or whatever you got some cardboard if you don't want to you know dirty up your your space that you're gonna work at uh, we have Right there is the radiator drain plug. Um, we're gonna loosen it out, put the pan under, and let it flow out. So, uh, I drained it, got a lot of cooling out. You wanna close that up so it can stop leaking once you get everything out. Shouldn't take more than, I wanna say like six minutes, something like that. So, once you let that drain out, it's time to go back to the top. This is the bleeder screw for the the reservoir. You're gonna wanna take this out. Once you take this out, you're gonna have these two tabs. I usually grab it with some pliers. Pliers, you work it back and forth. Just work it. This is plastic, so be careful, don't like you know, go ham on it. And that loosens the the reservoir. So what I'm gonna do now is remove this hose from over here. There's a little clamp you guys can see. I'm gonna remove it because this is together with the shroud. So once I take out the shroud, the hose, this hose goes all the way to the reservoir, the bottom of the reservoir. So once I take out the shroud, everything will come together as one piece and then once we have the shroud off we could start disassembling pulling off the reservoir and changing the lines after you loosen this clamp uh just gotta finagle the holes around uh now that we have that out uh, i'm gonna take off this top hose just to get more room so we could take out the fan take this out gonna take the fan out to get more room then we'll bring out the whole shroud with the reservoir there's still coolant in the system so make sure you guys have a, a bucket underneath to catch some more coolant coming up to take the hoses off i have like a 45 degree pick to try to like get between the hoses and like work it around that's a, what i see works for me um, you can use like a flathead also Now that we have the upper hose off, it's time to take out the clutch fan. So I have this uh, special tool. I bought this from FCP, I think like $30. There's other ways people get the tool off, but this works. So, you know, why use anything else? So basically one holds the clutch fan, the nut, and the other one's supposed to stop the water pump from moving. So it catches on the bolts of the water pump. 
that's on the pulley. And at the same time as you hold the one tool, you try to break it loose from the water pump. Uh, these clutch fans are reverse thread. So it's righty, loosey, lefty, tighty. Just keep that in mind. Now all you have to do is just uh, spin it and it'll back yourself up like this. You don't want to spin it, you want to make sure you catch it because once it gets off the thread, it will drop. I like that. So we're going to let that sit real quick and then we're going to pull off the whole shroud. So you're actually supposed to have some clips here in the backside holding on the shroud to the radiator, but here I have some zip ties. So once we cut that off, uh, we should be able to lift the shroud up. Forgot to take this off this goes into the radiator this is the one that goes to the expansion tank so once i take that off we should be good to pull up also we have a connector here for the level sensor on the expansion tank just take it off put it to the side and there we go now what i'm gonna do is take off the lower radiator hose uh this clamp over here and that clamp over there you can see how old and how long this hose has been here. The hose is just like disintegrating and it's all gunky and stuff. So this is basically what I do to get all the hoses out. I just stick the pick in and like try to go around and loosen everything up. going to remove uh, the radiator with with the hose there because I'm not using this radiator anymore so it doesn't, it doesn't even matter if I take it out or not it's still garbage so we're gonna have we have this sensor on the side of the radiator make sure to take that out and we're also gonna need to remove it and transfer it over to the new radiator prying this back and forth slowly. This is what holds the radiator to the car. That comes off like this. So it sits in there, holds the radiator to the car. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Like that. And we should be ready to pull it. Like so. We're gonna take off the the belt, so we need to access the tensioner. Right here is the tensioner. Uh, if yours has a like little cap, just there you go. You take that off, and it is a uh, where is it? It's a eight millimeter hex. You put it in. Make sure it's in all the way. Uh, you go to tighten, and it takes the tension off. The belt. You just pull off the belt. That's that. Four screws, 10 mils uh, to get the pulley off. Once you get the pulley, you can access the water pump. So let's take the pulley off first. Sometimes you gotta pry the, the pulley and get stuck in there. Off like this you see you have uh, four bolts one two three four to take off the water pump those are also 10 mils kind of have to you know manhandle it just 
probably just a little bit. Oopsie daisy. Oh, that got messy. Since I didn't drain it from the block, this is everything that's in the motor. It's coming out to the front, basically. So we're gonna leave that uh, water pump draining, whatever is left. Now we're gonna take off the thermostat housing. We have one bolt here, which is a 10, a 13 that is alongside this, this uh, engine uh, hoist location thing. That's a 13, we gotta take that off and then maybe loosen this to try to like get it to move because this goes in front of this and we can't take out the thermostat without moving this. So we have that 13 and then on each side there's uh, two more 10 mils. So let's loosen all that up. Have to loosen this so it'll be able to move once we go time to take it off. Leave it on there just a little bit so I'll be able to pull it out. So, gonna fly out like that. This shit is fucking disgusting. Bro. We're gonna take a little flat and then just work it a little. Yeah, they like to get stuck like that. What we're gonna do now is just clean up all the mating surfaces between the thermostat and the water pump. Um, I like to like clean out the studs, clean out the studs, clean the bolts if they have any like residue, uh, clean all like the cooling off the belts. Uh, this gives me a good time like to clean the front of the engine, like brake clean um, since we, you know, here already. So I got everything all cleaned up. Take your um, thermostat. You see it has the arrow right here. Just place it on there. Make sure it's straight. Make sure this gasket doesn't move. Then you're gonna wanna place it. Make sure that the thermostat housing goes uh, under this uh, engine hoist uh, bracket. The thermostat. Uh, what I do, I just snug it like, like when you when you start feeling resistance on the bolt. That's when you know to stop. If you guys want to torque it down, you can. But I have pretty much a feel of where it should be. But that's up to you guys. Tying down the three tens, one, two, three, and the 13. Don't forget about the 13 right here. That's tight. And now let's put on the water pump. Just like the thermostat, I like to wet it with like old coolant just so when I try to put it in, it goes in smoothly. Uh, the writing in the bottom, writing at the bottom shows you that that's the bottom. Once you have, you think you have enough to catch some threads, just thread them in. And then let the, let the threads push the water pump into its place. pattern so if you do the corner here you do the bottom on the left side and then the one on the right and just like that so it could walk in smoothly it doesn't go in like cock size now they're all tight just same thing, snug it down till you can't feel any resistance and you should be good. They're little bolts, so they don't really take that much torque. Now we'll put in the bolts for the pulley on the water pump. Just screw them in by hand. Tying them down once you have the belt on so the water pump doesn't move and you can actually tighten it up. 
So now let's get the belt on. We're gonna take our eight mil. Make sure you have a long ratchet because you're gonna need the leverage to try to turn this. Here it is if you wanna see the configuration. I usually take a picture of it before I do it um, on all cars just cause it can get confusing. So it's time to transfer over the sensor. Uh, this is a brand new sensor I ordered from FCP. And look at my Mishimoto right here. Yo, Mishimoto made some good parts, man. Got the M for Mills. Oof, fire. The sensor goes over here. It's a 22. So I'm just gonna turn it down real quick. This should be good enough. Now let's go put it on the car. Uh, I forgot to mention you have to take these catches on the bottom from your old radiator because Mishimoto doesn't provide that. So this is just like what it sits on in the bottom. So let's go with it. Oh, I forgot to mention. Also, you have to grab these from the from the old radiator. These are the grommets that go inside, which um, hold it. They fit like that. Just push it in. Fit. Just like that, man. Now that we got the radiator in, it's time to put the uh, lower hose. What you want to do, you want to orient the clamps, you know, a certain way so you can always tighten it down. And let's say this works to leak again, or what, for whatever reason you have to take off this hose, you could take it off, you know. So I'm gonna put mine like that. So if anything, I can see it from the top. I can loosen it, tighten it, you know, it's easier to work on if I ever need to take this off again. Or oh, sometimes these clamps get loose and you can always retighten them. That's a good thing about these clamps. So I put the reservoir in uh, with a new, it came with a new level sensor. I'm probably gonna have to move that around to orient it the other way. All I did was unclamp this, it popped right out. Right now, what we have to do is put the fan shroud with the fan and we should be moving. So I finally got the shroud on. Um, I didn't bolt it down or anything, but it's lined. Um, I was having some trouble um, aligning these these clips on the shroud to the radiator. Like they weren't like going down smoothly and you kind of have to like hold the, you can't put the fan on before you put the shroud. So you have to put the shroud first before you start catching threads on the fan. So what I noticed was like the radiator wasn't like, like it has movement. Even though it's clamped, it has movement. So what I did, I just like moved the radiator so I could could get that last one all the way down there. I don't know if you guys can see it. But it's the same thing. Same thing, same clips on this side. Um, I just had to like move the radiator. Even like, I didn't take it off. I didn't take it off the holes, but I just like moved it so that um, like these could line up and I could like Fit the shroud perfectly in and also what i did to get the fan on i just held it like one one hand here one hand down there and try to like square the fan so it'll be like evenly so it could just like rotate smoothly so it doesn't go in like cock-sided so that worked for me uh, now i'm gonna just i'm gonna see if i have like some screws that fit here because like the old radiator i just had zip ties but this has no like place where I can put a zip tie. So I think I'm gonna just have to find some screws that fit. And yeah. And also I have to sign out the the clutch fan. 
sucks that they didn't come with like hardware. The old uh, radiator uses clips and this one uses screws. I don't know, but whatever. We got it to work. I also had to get another clamp because the clamp I had was like the the fitting coming out of the Mishimoto radiator is thicker than the one that was uh, the stock one, the stock radiator. So uh, the clamp was too small, so I had to get another clamp. This thing on that holds on the the reservoir. Um, I have to tighten down the holes all the way back here, and then put the upper holes, and we should be good. So I tightened out the holes in the back, put the upper on, clamped it down. Uh, I wanted to show you guys, you see how I like oriented all the clamps so I could get to it. Like even with everything on, I can access every clamp and it makes it easier like to service. And if it ever gets loose, you can just tighten it down. You don't have to take anything off once you put everything back together uh intake front cowl um you're gonna want to bleed you need to bleed the cooling system after that you should be done uh, i have a video on bleeding the cooling system if you guys need it check it out we'll be in the description other than that thanks for watching see you guys next time